Sup guys, Bjorn here. I'm finally back with another full guide. We're taking a look at the Havoc Demon Hunter today. One of the most fun melee specs in 9.1, I think, and in the game in general. I have been playing it for the last couple of months here in 9.1, and I've been finding it a ton of fun. I've been doing the raid, doing some high keys, doing some medium keys, doing all kinds of stuff, really. Uh, trying it out, trying out some different talent builds, some different Legos. And I feel like I have a decent understanding of the class, although obviously I'm by no means an expert, so I'm probably going to make some mistakes here. I'm probably going to forget to mention some important stuff, maybe some tech, maybe some uh, nice little things that you can remind me of in the comments below. If you have any questions, feel free to also leave a comment. Otherwise, like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more 9.1 content. Without further ado, let's get into the guide. A good way to start would just be with a quick overview of the spec in my opinion. We have uh, a very very simple resource uh, system with a generator and a spender, nothing too big. Uh, rounding out that we have a couple of like short to medium CDs with IBM, Amara, uh, Essence Break, stuff like that. And the playstyle of the Havoc Demon Hunter is greatly going to depend on your talent build. It's a very unique melee spec in the way that you don't have like an AOE build and a single target build. You have a couple of different styles of builds and the different builds, they both do single target, they both do AOE. It's more a choice of preference, right? Which one would you rather play as? Which one do you find more fun? In that way, I think Havoc Demon Hunter is a great spec to play because you will never really be locked into one build. Havoc does actually have a really nice talent tree. There are some good different uh, playstyle defining talents that also synergize with each other. So there are the clear builds in the talent tree. Now, the two uh, builds that are really played right now are either Demonic with full eye beam or Momentum. When it comes to the Havoc profile, um, the both builds are very similar in profile. Uh, it's basically a consistent profile where you uh, do damage all the time regardless of having CDs. They do have some um, Some peaks obviously when meta on that four minute cooldown is gonna be a good window And then you also have the hunt if you're playing night fair for example, but Usually very very consistent profile across both AOE and single target Now something else to to mention about the demon hunter is obviously the quality of life you get with the glide and the double lump and all that But of course you guys all know that already Moving on to Havoc's strengths and weaknesses. This is uh, another section where you will soon notice that the strengths are profound, they're good. They um, actually give Havoc some real nice um, plays in the meta. But the weaknesses are not really weaknesses, honestly. Like, uh, I, I, I'm struggling to find weaknesses in Havoc. Regardless, let's get straight into it. We have good single target and good AoE just across the board like consistent damage is just straight up good it's uh it's it's really really top tier right now maybe not extremely top tier but you still see havoc occasionally being played in the mdi even though it doesn't have those like insane huge pump moments right you see it being played a, a lot in the raid it's just a really really strong spec across all forms of content it's good in pvp as well and they just have consistent damage no matter what uh, talent build you play you will do that they also have decent burst um in momentum especially now even in demonic you have some good burst right because you do have that four minute meta you also have the hunt if you're playing night Fae, and even just entering demon form or like uh, some essence break windows and stuff like that can be some decent burst so and they have a raid buff they do share that the uh, raid buff with vengeance but what they don't share with Vengeance is their Raid City Darkness. So that's also a little bit of an extra plus there. You, you do need to bring a Havoc Demon Hunter if you want that darkness. And I think that's um, actually something that Blizzard should look at giving other other melee specs as well, like uh, Windwalker or, or Feral or specs that aren't really being played. You know, uh, Wind Fury does exist, obviously, for enhancement shaman so that's nice but feral could use something like that maybe maybe feral could could have a um, a raid cd that is not uh, shared across the other the other specs of druid now when it comes to the weaknesses of uh, havoc as i said i'm struggling to find but we, we have the squishy argument right some havoc demon hunters will say they are squishy 
Now, uh, I can see both sides of the argument because sure, like in terms of pure defensive cooldowns, they don't have the best toolkit, obviously. They have Blur, which is a really strong cooldown, but uh, it's also the only one they have except for Darkness, which you do want to save for that raid scenario, right? So if you don't have Blur, you don't really have a, a CD, sure. On the other hand, you're already stacking Verse, so you're going to be naturally very tanky. Uh, you have a ton of leech from talents. You have meta form, which makes you really tanky. Like there's just so much um, that actually, in reality, makes you much tankier than you look on the surface. So I don't think that squishy is a very strong weakness of the havoc demon hunter. I, in fact, think at at high gear levels, havoc is uh, one of the tankiest specs in the game because just of how much verse you have and just how much leech you have and how much of the time you spend in meta. But Sure, on lower gear, you might be a little squishy. You also have to use mobility to do damage, especially if you're playing momentum. Now, I don't really think this is a weakness either, because you still have like Night Fae for mobility, you have the Hunt, you have uh, good like a lot of movement speed naturally on Havoc. Like You just have so much mobility that having to use some of it for damage isn't really happening in any way. Uh, but coming to the last weakness, which is... I think Havoc's biggest weakness right now and if this wasn't the case like if they had this I think they would be insanely broken so what they don't have is they don't really have any huge pump moments right if you compare them to some other specs in game like Windwalker like Hunter Warlock uh, you know Mage they those classes they have buttons which they press and they do a ton of damage you know Storm Melee on uh, on uh, elemental shaman stuff that just destroys you see them playing mdi doing like 100k dps 70k dps regularly the havoc can't really do that um very consistently now there are some ways to do it for example if you um, play a specific legendary with a specific talent build there are some ways to do some really good uh, big pump on aoe and similarly of course if you pop meta if you do all of your stuff then you are still gonna burst heavily on single target as well but with the caveat that it's on a four minute cd and you're still maybe not gonna reach the quite the levels of some other specs in the game of course that is completely fair because you do have the most consistent damage in the game but that is something to to take into consideration right if you want something that just annihilates it's not really havoc havoc is more of a spread out damage profile Moving on to the talents then. Talents are where Havoc really shines, as I said before. Um, you can see I'm currently speaking to Momentum. Um, this is the harder one to play. And uh, it's also the most fun one in my opinion. Because what you're doing is you're taking Fill Blade here. Uh, giving you an extra and a little nice dash. More mobility. More outplay potential. And you also have a generator with this. And you're going to take Demon Blades, which converts your demon spite into just auto attack generating which uh, saves you a ton of globals right because otherwise you would have to spend a ton of globals on demon spite generating 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 to spend it well as with the demons demon blades you will now passively generate with your auto attacks instead this is the one of the most crucial talents to play momentum then you take unbound chaos making um Immolation or increased damage of your next fell rush by 500%. This is just because you're fell rushing anyway, right? So uh, this just does a ton of AoE damage, some really good single target damage as well. And uh, it doesn't really cost you any globals. It doesn't cost you any downtime. There's like nothing bad with this talent whatsoever. Just a really, really good one. Soul rending is obviously... Uh, up to personal preference here i usually take this if the key level is really high or i know i need to like really really survive something i could take netherwalk here i think it's fine but usually i take soul running especially with high gear soul running becomes better and better when you're going to survive those moments anyway uh, then and also when the leech starts coming relevant like when you can just top yourself up with leech and never ever require healing then soul running is very very useful right especially if you're playing demonic i think you should always take soul running now Essence Break is also a very, very crucial talent for Momentum. It's basically what you play around. It's a 20 second cooldown and it increases the damage of your KO Strike and of your Blade Dance, right? So all of your spenders are now increased and um, it's 40% as well, so it's a, a lot, right? This is your mini burst window. And 
We have Unleash Power. Obviously, you can swap this around depending on the situation. Fell Eruption might be good for if you need single target stuns. For PvP, it's really nice. Master of the Glaive is good in raids and stuff where you use throw glaive sometimes. And Unleash Power is where you should play in dungeons because you can Chaos Nova more often and also you don't need to spend Fury on it. Now, with the last talent is obviously the build's name. It's Momentum. It's what defines the whole playstyle, and what it does is it increases fell rush damage by, f or f sorry, fell rush increases your damage by 15% for six seconds, and it also turns ventral retreat into a generator that generates 80 fury over 10 seconds. Now, fell rush increasing damage down by 15% is really busted, and it lines up well with essence break because fell rush has a 10 second recharge, right? So you can do fell rush. Fell rush and then essence break and then you will have both of your fell rushes up again by the time essence break comes back up and we're happy gamers we're kind of pumping and you will also overlap that 10 seconds of momentum 15 percent increased damage with the 40 percent increased damage of essence break window which means that in this essence break window you will pump right this also means that in that essence break window, you will need to gen or you will need to have pooled and be spending a lot, right? You don't want to be fury starved in this window. You want to have a lot of fury going into it, which means that we will want to use ventral retreat before we go into that window, right? And ventral retreat is a twenty second cooldown. It uh, gives us eighty fury over ten seconds if um, if we hit something with it. So what we can do now is something like ventral retreat, fell rush, fell rush essence break right and this becomes our our natural uh, little ebb and flow where we do this we pump during that essence break then we chill we wait for the next essence break we do the same thing again unbound chaos plays really nice into this right because we're gonna activate emulation aura we're gonna uh, have that open uh, up a lot of the time and that's gonna also gonna give us 20 fury and Every time we do that, we will just wait for the next essence break window. And when it's time to fail rush, we have that charge stored up. It's going to do a lot of passive damage. Nothing we need to worry too much about. Demon blades, as I talked about before, um, just means that we will have more time in essence break to just spend while our auto attack generates for us in that essence break window. Real nice. And fail blade is something we can use before the essence break window or if we're not really proccing demon blades in the essence break window we could always use it to generate once in the essence break window to get up a little bit more fury to spend so this whole build synergizes really well together it's the most fun demon hunter build in my opinion but it is actually quite hard to play while that might have sounded simple on paper what i just told you uh, you also have some other spells that you need to incorporate here right you have i beam that's on a 30 second cooldown, so it's gonna only gonna line up with every other window of Essence Break, which is a little weird. And uh, you also have stuff like Fell Blade, you also have to actually have a target to use Vendor Retreat on, you have to aim all your Fell Rushes the right way, you have to make sure to actually aim your Essence Break, you have to make sure to actually pull before the Essence Break every single time, you need to spend as much as possible in there. There's a lot of stuff that can go wrong, is what I'm saying here. So. Yeah, and also just maximizing the momentum, like 50% damage increase is huge, right? So there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong here. Momentum is tough to play, but I would recommend it because it is just so much fun. And you will also improve a ton of the game learning it. Now, if you're not a Chad, if you're a little Sigma male and just want something easy to face roll with, you can play the Demonic build, right? Um, this is the build. You can probably play this. Uh, it's probably better than Trail of Rune right now, but... What this essentially does is turn you from a like chaos striking uh, beast into a just eye beam little little bitch. We basically just turned ourselves into a full on eye beam bot. Blind fury makes us generate uh, full fury with eye beam every single time we use it, so we never have to think about our fury. We just press eye beam. We're going still to full fury. Then uh, this is just passive. Nothing we have to worry about. Same with armor chaos as before, right? You could play Trail of Ruin, you could play Glaive Tempest, I'm not stopping you here, Whatever, do whatever you want. Here I would recommend playing Soul Rending if you're playing Demonic because you're just going to be in uh, Demon form for that much, right? Now, Cycle of Hatred is the first really playstyle defending talent here, I think, uh, apart from Blind Fury. 
what it does is it lowers the cooldown of I-beam the more you spend with Chaos Strike, right? So this becomes your rotation. You want to just maximize Chaos Strike uptime. You want to press that as much as possible to get I-beam back as fast as possible to be in Demonic more. Because what Demonic does is it causes you to enter Demon form after doing I-beam, right? So ex um, the, the playstyle changes quite a bit, but we're soon going to find out here that it is incredibly incredibly simple because all we're really doing is we're getting us up to 30 fury right now we can just i beam that gives us full fury already but what are we supposed to do now you might think oh we're supposed to fail rush or, or anything no we're just supposed to get that i beam back right so we just ko strike here we just ko strike a lot and then we're gonna have to generate a little bit because we don't have demon blades right so we're gonna have to generate with um, demon spite and then we're spending again. Oh, now we have I beam back, right? So we get the 30 fury, we press I beam, and now we do it all over again, right? And obviously, you're supposed to press like emulation aura in between here, and you're supposed to use Unbound Chaos proc once in a while when you have that. But otherwise, there's nothing really else here, right? Because Venture Retreat, uh, that doesn't do anything anymore without momentum, and all of your other spells are kind of useless. Now, on three targets, you want to Blade Dance as well. But assuming this is a single target pull here, all you're really doing is I beam, you're spending, you're generating, you're spending, you're spending, you're generating. So, are there any switch ups or anything you can do? Yes, there are. Um, first of all, obviously, these rows here, where you have some utility, you can choose whatever you want, whatever feels good. I personally wouldn't really recommend Desperate Instincts. Um, you could try out Felbrush. I'm not stopping you, but I would recommend one of these two. And then we have Glaim Tempest. Some people like using it. I personally prefer Amber Chaos most of the time because in Demonic, you want to spend most of your Fury on Chaos Strike, right? To get I Beam back. So you don't really want to spend anything on Glaive Tempest. You would rather spend on Chaos Strike. And in, uh, in uh, Momentum, well, you're supposed to fell rush a lot, so just fell rushing more and that dealing more damage is obviously way better than having to spend like 30 fury on a Glaive Tempest where you want to spend everything in your essence break window on momentum. So Glaive Tempest does really fit in too well to any of the two playstyles, but it does some damage and it's fun to press, so I'm not stopping you. Trail Bruin on the other hand, uh, it's just too boring and Blade Dance doesn't do anything on single targets, so it's just a dead talent on single target, I don't know, uh, sad, 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 sad times. But somewhere where Havoc actually has a lot of fun stuff is in the legendary section. They have a ton of different ver uh, viable legendaries, to be fair, and they're not incredibly fun, but um, there are definitely some nice interactions in there. I would recommend you to start off by crafting Burning Wound as your first legendary, because it works in every single scenario, right? It's just a really, really strong legendary. It works in demonic, it works in momentum, it works on AoE, it works on single target. It does almost top tier damage in all of those scenarios, actually. So having it is never gonna hurt you. Um, what it does is it leaves a dot on any target you generate on, and they also take 65% increased damage from Imara, which is gonna be super broken. That means your Imara is gonna pump. It's gonna probably become your best ability on AoE. So uh, except for IB, maybe if you're playing uh, Demonic, that is. But still, it's a really good ability on AoE either way. And uh, it's pretty passive, although on AoE you're gonna have to like target swap a lot to keep this up if you wanna uh, maximize it. If you do that, however, if you can keep this up on like 10 targets or even like eight, six, five, six, seven targets, it's gonna be so fucking strong, trust me. So I would really, uh, I would really recommend you to craft this first in all scenarios. Then, if you are a demonic lover and you like playing I-beam specs, then you could go for Dark Limb Medallion because it's just a really strong I-beam legendary. And there also are some fun implications to it, right? You have the 40% chance to proc. Refunding 30 Fury is mega useless for demonic, sadly, right? Because you're playing Blind Fury anyway, right? So you're gonna get that Fury back no matter if you refund it or not. But either way, it's pretty good for demonic. Uh, 40% chance to reset is pretty 
pretty decent, right? It's not bad, so you could go for that. If you want an even more passive I-Beam Lego, you could go for Collective Anguish. It's just an even more passive one. You summon a allied Vengeance Demon Hunter who casts Feldev. Feldev does a good amount of damage. It's every single I-Beam, very consistent, very good on AoE for Demonic. Um, it's probably the best AoE Lego for Demonic, but it also is extremely passive and extremely boring, right? If you play Momentum, you could go for Blazing Slaughter, and this works on Demonic 2, sure, but not as well in my opinion. It requires you to be Night Fae, obviously, and it gives you up to 20% Agi if you do a, an AoE hunt, and it also gives you an Imora, and that's the big part, right? Because not only does Imora do a good amount of damage, but it gives you an Unbound Chaos proc. So what you could do is you could play um, Blazing Slaughter, as I have one right now, and you could pre Amara, having a, uh, a proc up, and then you will uh, wait for your Amara to, to come back up, right? Once it's uh, soon up and your proc is running out, you're, you're gonna start to pull and you will proc momentum, right? With that first one. Having momentum, you can then hunt with increased damage buff. That will give you an extra Amara and an extra Amazon Chaos proc. Then you will use that proc as well, and then you have your Imora back on CD, so you will use Imora again here, and now you have another Ammon Chaos proc, and you will use that as well. So you can see if I use that in quick succession here, only on three targets, that's already was like probably a lot of damage, let's say that. Um, if I would have played that faster instead of just spending five seconds explaining it, but. You can see what I'm saying? It's a very, very potent uh, combination, especially on like mass AoE. If there were 10, 20 targets there, you know, that is an insane amount of burst. And that is also probably the only way that Havoc does that really, really crazy AoE burst. What you're losing though, is that very, very consistent MR damage if you would be playing Burning Wound, right? So even though this gives you an MR, every single MR you get is gonna be way less impactful because you're not playing Burning Wound. So you gotta remember that as well. And I would only really recommend playing this if you either think it's super fun or if you're playing like extremely big keys with like uh, the other side maybe, the Artemel section there. If you're going like 20 mob pulls in there, this could be worth it. If you're playing halls and you're doing like a mega pulls at the start, this could be worth it as well. Otherwise, I think Burning Wound is gonna outperform uh, always, especially on Momentum. When, we, when it comes to single target, um, there isn't really another good option except Burning Wound. The only one is Chaos Theory, and there have been some like good logs with Chaos Theory, etc. It is very inconsistent, right? E either you proc it a lot and it really works out for you, or you don't proc it and it sucks ass. The problem with Chaos Theory is that it procs up a Blade Dance, but you don't use Blade Dance on single target, so there's really like it's it's really horrible, right? you have to press a spell you would never press on single target just for a 30% chance to give you a buff. Once you get that buff though, it does do a lot of damage. So it could work for both momentum and, and uh, demonic, I guess, but uh, I wouldn't recommend crafting it. If you think it's fun, go for it, but otherwise no. That's really all the viable legendaries. When it comes to soul binds, conduits, uh, covenants and stuff like that, I would recommend being Night Fae because Night Fae is going to be most consistent in all scenarios, it's uh, best on single target, it's probably best on AoE. Now, there are some Necrolord advocates, I have seen some really high key pushers playing Necrolord, but um, I don't think it's better on single target, and I also think it's very questionable if it's even better on AoE. I also don't know a single thing about the ability or the playstyle, so I'm not going to talk about it here. You can go research it yourself if you really want to see what it's about, but I would recommend playing Night Fae. If you're playing Night Fae, you have three different soul binds. Karain is the AoE one because you have first strike, right? And this is gonna be super, super strong in dungeons. I recommend always playing Karain in every single dungeon you do. If you're on a single target boss fight, however, Naya is probably better. Uh, and she's my single target preferred choice. You could also play Dreamweaver for single target. She's not far behind. The difference here is that Dreamweaver has three potency conduits and uh, you will play Relentless Onslaught there. So maybe if you're playing Demonic, if you really Chaos Strike a lot, or if you just like Relentless Onslaught, then maybe Dreamweaver with that could be good. 
I personally prefer to play Naya, and then I play two potency conduits with Naya's tools burst. This is very, very strong in Havoc because you'll proc it a ton. You have a lot of haste, you have a lot of damage instances to proc this thing. And then you play your two potency conduits, which are Growing Inferno, extremely good potency conduit. It's basically what turns your Imara from being useless to being the best damage spell in the game on Momentum, on AoE. Then we have Unnatural Malice, which is just going to increase the dot effect of your hu hunt ability. And the hunt is 1.5 minutes CD, so it might seem pretty troll, but you gotta remember that the hunt dot was actually buffed in 9.1, and 40% increase of in on it is very strong, and all of the other Havoc Potency Conduits are fucking dog shit, so <laughs> you have to play this. It's it's actually way better than it seems, trust me, it is good. Uh, and Growing Inferno, super strong, so those two every single time. As I said, you could play Relentless Onslaught on Dreamer if you wanted to, but I personally don't like it. When it comes to Endurance and Finesse Conduits, uh, there's nothing really stand out here except maybe Viscous Ink could be pretty decent. I would pro uh, really recommend playing that. Conan's Atmosphere is pretty decent as well. You have Felfire Haste is my preferred Finesse Conduit of choice. Of course, you could use any of these if you wanted to, but um, those are my preferred ones. When it comes to stats and gear, Havoc also has a pretty interesting and uh, versatile picture here, because versatile, because um, you do want versatility as your best stat probably, it makes you really tanky, it's one of your best damage stats, and it's just a safe bet on all builds and all scenarios, right? And that's what you're really looking for. So I would recommend playing verse first, socketing verse, Enchanting Verse. I have Enchanted Haste here. That's just because I was a little bit low on Haste before and I also really like playing with a lot of Haste because it's fun. Um, haste is your second best or your best set along with Verse, right? But um, if you have as much Haste as I have, obviously Verse is going to become better and vice versa. I would also recommend seeming your character, obviously, for stats. Don't um, trust uh, uh, just a simple stat priority it's never worked for any class so ob obviously same but if you want a general thing to aim for while you're gearing and stuff like that i would recommend going for verse and haste now once you get the frost set however because the frost set is what you're going to play on havoc and that just skyrockets the priority of crit right so if you're in the raid you're playing havoc you have the frost set then crit is going to be your best stat so I could, you could go for like a crit heavy build with that, and that would also mean that you would go into dungeons with a lot of crit, right, if you don't have multiple uh, gear sets. So going into dungeons with a lot of crit, that's really bad for Demonic, because Demonic likes haste verse, and then it likes mastery, and then crit as the fourth best stat, so... It doesn't really overlap very well having Frost set and playing Demonic in dungeons. That's why I usually play Frost set uh, and I'm gonna try to get more crit with that. And then I play Momentum in dungeons because Momentum values crit over mastery. Now, that said, you know, you're already playing First Strike, so crit isn't really that great in dungeons anyway, which means I would still just go for Haste verse uh, if you're mostly playing dungeons. Other than the Frost set, you're not really looking for too many specific gear pieces. The ones you do want though are Cruceform Vein Ripper from Painsmith is a really really strong weapon. Uh, offhand or mainhand doesn't really matter, but it does a ton of damage uh, with the bleed. You do want to be behind the target, obviously with this, but you always want to be behind the target as a melee player anyway, so there's no real uh, gameplay difference here from this weapon. It's just a really really strong option. Um, then you want Pox Storm as well uh, from Plague Fall, right? I don't have Pox Storm currently, but I will try to get it. It's uh, the same principle here, it just applies a dot. And um, the reason these are so good for Havoc is the same reason that like Naya's Tools Burst are good for Havoc, right? You just have a ton of haste, a ton of damage instances, you'll proc these things a lot. Trinkets are a similar story, you have Decanter. Anima Charge Wins is a decent one, um, it's not one of the best ones, but it's a really really strong just overall good dungeon one, it's completely passive, it procs a ton on Havoc. Uh, I also have Shadow Grasp Totem, it's not the best one, but it's decent if you use it well. The The ones you do really want though are uh, File from Plaguefall, for obvious reasons, right? You, um, 
it's just really strong on like all melee specs. And then you also have from the raid Guardian's Trinket, right? The salvaged fusion amplifier. For the same reasons I talked about earlier, with it proccing a lot, for during that 20 seconds you will do a ton of attacks and all of those will proc arcane damage on hit. Very, very strong trinket. If you can get your hands on that, do that. Otherwise, nothing much to mention in terms of gear. So, moving on to the rotation, I figured I would just start with uh, <laughs> the demonic spec because that one is probably going to take me about 5 seconds to explain. So. We obviously don't really have any standout talents here, as I talked about earlier. Demon's Bite goes on the bars, and the rotation basically consists of getting 30 Fury, using I-Beam, using the Demonic Window to spend as much as possible, right? Because you do more damage in Demonic. Now we're out of Demonic. We can spend an Elm of Chaos proc if we want to, sure. You obviously use the Hunt on cooldown, so if we were big gamers we would have used the hunt instantly there when we pulled and uh, yeah other than that you just uh, spend while waiting for ibeam to come up you uh, use the demonic or use the demon from window to spend a lot generate spend generate the rotation just comes down to pressing demons bite and then pressing chaos strike pressing demons bite pressing chaos strike pressing demons bite pressing chaos strike and you want to make sure that you have 30 energy when you press I-beam because if you're over that you're obviously going to waste some uh, energy so don't do that. You want to spend some procs, whatever. You, you see I'm already getting bored of this. I don't want to explain this anymore. Now, if we ignore this spec and we go to the other actual real playstyle here called Demonic or called Momentum, we have a bit of a different situation because suddenly we have a new generator called Failblade. And um, we don't no longer have Demon Spite, so we can't really spam generate anything. We have to think a little bit more and press a little bit less, which is something I generally really enjoy in a spec. We still have Unbound Chaos, nothing to worry about there. Essence Break is our new big boy talent, right? It's on a 20 second cooldown and it's gonna be our uh, big burst window. As I said before, we want to make sure we have this f momentum damage buff going into essence break we also want to make sure we have a lot of mm, fury going into essence break so how do we get fury well we can use ventral retreat we can use immolation aura and we can use fell blade so making sure to have used some of those to have maximum energy going into essence break is going to be very important then we also obviously want to still use i beam because i beam gives us haste when it finishes ch ch uh, channeling right so Having 15% haste during a essence break window is going to be very very strong Which means that we always want to use I-beam before essence break if it is possible Now I-beam is a 30 second cooldown so you quickly figure out that this is not going to be possible with a lot of essence breaks uh, But sometimes it is possible and when it is we do it Emo aura doesn't really do anything much but we do need to uh, make sure to press it on cooldown So we get maximum amount of unbound chaos procs The other thing with momentum is that since you have this 15% damage buff after using fell rush you want to make sure that every single like big damage instance you have um, is buffed by that 15% right so we definitely want to hunt after you use fell rush in momentum and stuff like that right um, so in practice it's going to be a bit more difficult than that because we're going to have to like fit in some really weird globals into some windows that are going to delay our windows the next time that are going to misalign everything and sometimes venture retreat will be up like a couple of seconds before essence break sometimes it won't be up sometimes it will be up way before it just really misaligns itself the longer you play into the fight because you have globals like i beam like the hunt like immolation aura like blade dance sometimes like venture retreat like fell blade that just kind of messes up your flow of Fell rush, fell rush, essence break, right? That that thing should, in theory, be what you do every single time, but it's not gonna work that way because sometimes you will like be have to, to maybe fit an I beam, so you would do something like fell rush, fell rush back, and then I beam, and then essence break, or um, you would maybe have to do like fell rush and then hunt back, and then you would do uh, another fell rush. And then maybe fell blade back and then essence break just because you really need to use that hunt in the in the momentum window 
those kinds of weird things that just delay everything a little bit in the long run they add up to just like completely misaligning everything you spell and just making it so that you're gonna have to improvise way more than you think you have to sometimes it's worth holding for windows sometimes it's just worth using the stuff on cooldown right ibm is usually not worth holding but sometimes it is it's just gonna be a mess and um the best i can do is probably show you the the opener here so we're just gonna wait 50 seconds for the hunt to come back and uh, then we'll go with the momentum opener okay so i'm not a real uh read up momentum gamer you know i haven't studied the arts of this spec too much but the opener I usually go with looks something like this. And it starts with starts off with the number of chaos proc, right? And you want to use that to go in. Then you obviously want to hunt with that momentum that you just used. You I-beam, you vent for retreat, you cancel that vent for retreat, you then I-beam again, you then immor again, you fell rush, you fell rush, you essence break. Now you pump with the essence break in, in the window here. You obviously need to use trinkets. If you weren't retarded, please proc demon blades. You don't, you do actually, you're happy. And now you're kind of chilling, you're waiting for the next window here. You're gonna Immora, you're gonna Venture Retreat, Fell Rush, Fell Rush. Now you have the next Essence Break window, you pump here. And you see now that. Oh shit, I should not have pressed that I beam. Kind of trolling. Maybe I should actually, that was probably good. See, I'm already not even sure if I played correctly or not. But I think I played wrong there. I sh maybe should have saved that I beam uh, a little bit longer. And. There I should definitely have vent for retreat before this window, that was horrible. And you see now I'm already fucking up because I'm speaking and I forgot to vent for retreat. And I don't have any fury for this essence break window. And it already looks sad. It already looks super sad, guys. Okay, so now we're going into something nicer. We can do I-beam, vent for retreat, Immora, fell rush, fell rush. I missed that first fell rush, really awful, guys, don't do that. And then you will pump with essence break. You can also use Fell Blade in the Essence Break window if you need to get more energy or fury. Another thing you really want to do on Momentum is you want to like venture retreat into walls like this to stay in melee range more often. And here you would do this, hunt. And here we have I beam upright but we're not supposed to use it because we're in an Essence Break window. And there I should probably have used it but I didn't. We already have Venture Retreat up again, but we want to chill a little bit since Essence Break isn't up right. But now we use it. We use this, this. And uh, you see there, for example, I had to use both Fell Rushes without ever even getting off the, the Imora to get the proc. So now I have a proc stored up, but I'm not, I don't want to use Fell Rush for another 7 seconds. And it's about to expire, right? What do I do now? Now I have to use it like here. And then I have to uh, do this. And maybe now I I beam. And now I can do the essence break and now i kind of want to get immor on cd but i don't want to use it in the essence break window because that's trolling right but now i want to use it to get energy you see how many decisions i have to make every single time i like do anything on the spec it's actually a ton of fun and it's really it's really like it's not incredibly difficult to play obviously but it is probably one of the more difficult specs in the game it has a ton of uh, decisions all the time and this is only single target right so you can imagine it goes even worse on aoe although the aoe rotation is extremely similar to this one spoiler alert when it really becomes fun though is when you have like stuff like um for example raid uh, both or sorry raid bosses raid mechanics uh, or maybe target swapping you need to do burst windows you need to hit aoe windows in that thing where you where you really want to use all of your all of your big abilities right okay enough of button mashing another thing you really want to do that i didn't do there uh, is to like fell rush into walls i just didn't really want to fell rush up this thing because it was horrible but if you could like fell rush into this little lamp here for example that would be a lot better than fell rushing like away here because now you're super far away if you don't have any wall to fell rush into uh, or anything like that Another thing you really want to do is like, uh, you you want to be here, right? Or sorry, you want to be behind the target, but I can't be fucked to stand in there because of camera uh, camera angle, right? So let's just pretend that this is behind the target. I'm slapping him here, and as and I'm about to use fell rush here because I'm about to go into my essence break window. So I press maybe Imora, and as I press that last global going out, I 
just start pathing to this side, press the last global as I pre as I go here, and then I can fell rush back, and then I can fell rush back here, and then I'm already like almost in melee range of the essence break when I go in. While as if I start my first fell rush very close to the target here, then I will have a lot longer to to go back, and I will risk missing maybe my second fell rush. Uh, if the target's moving away, if the tank is trolling or something like that. So be sure to always uh, have a little bit of margin. Um, on the last global you might do like KO Strike, KO Strike, Im Aura, and here you can... Now I move too far and I, I can't really do it, but you see what I'm saying. Like you, you want to make sure to move a lot while playing momentum. That's also where a lot of the skill cap comes from, I guess. Um, same with... Um, Venture Retreat. Another good combo you could use um, every time if you get it down is to before your before your essence break window, right? You want to be really fury capped. So you cap fury with Venture Retreat, but you might not have a wall. It might be really awkward to use Venture Retreat on that raid fight. Something you can do is you can use Venture Retreat, Fell Blade, Fell Rush, Fell Rush. Uh, essence break and that will cancel your venture retreat backflip so if you're like standing close to an edge or if you're afraid you'll jump into something fall off if you really don't want to go that far back you can always use fell blade to cancel venture retreat the same obviously goes for like that combo just fell rush away and and fell blade back instantly um that stuff's become that stuff becomes a lot more useful when you start going into like real fights where um this like perfect play is not always gonna work out right sometimes you're gonna you're not gonna have both fell rush charges for the essence break window sometimes you will already have used one fell rush charge for something else maybe to kill an ad or to move somewhere or to just have uh, an armored chaos proc right if if you're playing on single target and uh, there's a ton of ads spawning on a boss for example the last boss in mists and you want to kill those little gormlings then you would obviously save your armor chaos proc for those gorms well that means that you're gonna spend fell rush on them as well right which means that might be a fell rush you might not have for your next essence break and that just snowballs into more decisions that snowballs into more decisions and it really just becomes more of an improvisation like cooldown management spec than anything else um the set rotation is not really there and the set prior list is not really there either which is something really weird to say in my opinion uh, definitely always prioritize like essence break but you never ever want an essence break without a fell rush buff right so that means prioritizing fell rush buffs when essence break is up but you never ever want a fell rush essence break without full fury which means prioritizing you see what I'm saying? It, it just comes down to a long list of stuff you need to do before every window. You also want to have the I-beam haste uh, before the essence break window if you can. Uh, as I said before, you want to use the knight or the hunt in fell always in um, a momentum uh, damage window. And then the generators comes down obviously to spending or to using fell blade as much as possible because fell blade has a chance to reset on your auto attack. So if if you don't use Fellblade a lot, you're gonna spend or you're gonna waste a lot of resets on Fellblade. Uh, so Fellblade is your like highest prio spell outside of your normal rotation. Like if if you don't have SS break, if you don't have your window coming up or anything to worry about, then the thing you're gonna worry about the most is definitely Fellblade. That's the one thing you're gonna keep on cool on. Um, and you also wanna obviously spend as much as possible most of the time because you could proc demon blades right and if you proc demon blades like twice or thrice in a row then you're suddenly going to be skyrocketing in, on fury and then you might also proc demon uh, fell blade reset which means you want to uh, use that as well but then you're suddenly over capping which means you s uh, first have to spend a little bit while as on your if you're already on like 17 fury and you see the fell blade proc comes and i proc like three demon blades here then i won't won't, won't over cap and i will um, actually save damage on the other hand before i go into the double fell rush essence break window i should not be at 42 fury here right because now i can't pump well as if i'm coming into that window with 120 fury and eventual retreat buff ticking and fell blade up and imora maybe or uh, not even that's probably not needed but still see what i'm saying then i'm suddenly gonna do like twice as much damage in the essence break and that's also why you see such huge differences between damage in mom by, between momentum players right because it is 
in that sense a pretty difficult spec to play right there's a very high variance between the bad players and the good players and that's fun in my opinion that's how specs should be in wow um so i'm personally very very big fan of this if we are moving over to the aoe rotation it really doesn't change much because um you really only still have the same spells the only thing that does change is blade dance becomes worth using on three plus targets uh, you do want to blade dance on cd but you also um have to remember that there is a lot of globals in momentum right so you might not even blade dance on cd very much you might blade dance like once in a while um but in reality there's probably more useful stuff you need to be doing than blade dancing if you're playing momentum however if you're playing demonic then you definitely need to blade dance on cd uh, especially in demon form it's really good right uh, that uh, death sweep now things to think about on aoe with momentum is basically that you want to maximize uses of your unbound chaos procs right it's very important hitting every single mob with that empowered fail rush is going to be a lot of your AOE damage similarly maximizing emulation are use you want to be in range of all the targets with emora and you want to spend as very very much of the emora as possible in range of all the mobs don't do stuff like you're gonna pull this pack in 10 seconds right or you're gonna pull this pack in like seven seconds here you emora pre emora just get the amber chaos brook and then you'll roll up to the pack like this and you will maybe fell rush fell rush essence break now your emora is already over and you don't have any Immora damage, and you are just basically wasted a whole Immora on one Umbled Chaos proc that did like uh, 10k damage or 15k damage, right? While as the Immora itself would have done a lot more if you just had one more Immora there, right? So you see only that little bit of Immora did 19k damage, while as if you had the whole thing ticking, it would do so much more. Another thing is to hunt through mobs, right? Uh, hunt goes through all the mobs in a line so if we're standing here and we're hunting this mob here then these two are gonna get dotted uh, if you don't really have a clear line to go through like this then you can do something like the wiggle which i'm gonna try to perform now you hunt and then you okay, didn't work uh, maybe i'm just bad or these guys are too far away but what you're supposed to do anyway is you're supposed to hunt and as you're landing the hunt or as you're like close to this target here approaching it you want to like um, move around a little bit like this with the mouse or with strafe or anything and that should in theory spread the hunt aoe to nearby targets now these are like pretty far away so i'm not sure if it even worked um you can see like i do only hit two of those with my essence break which is kind of weird but still that's a nice little hunt trick you can do if you want. Otherwise, the rotation doesn't change at all on AoE, basically. Um, blade dancing in your essence break windows is one thing you could consider, right? If there's a lot of targets, you want to blade dance in that essence break window instead of chaos striking, obviously. The main thing that will affect your damage on AoE, playing momentum and playing... Or sorry, not playing momentum, but playing the burning wound Lego... Uh, in general is that you obviously want to apply this to as many different mobs as possible right so once you've applied this to all the mobs in the pack your mra will do a ton of damage and keeping this up on like every single mob is uh, very very important in aoe uh, you might not be able to keep it up on like 10 mobs but you can definitely do it on five six seven eight mobs uh, easily and that is just gonna bust the uh, buff, buff your mra damage so much and it also makes, sorry, it also makes Everburn very, very competitive on AoE, right? This is suddenly one of the best Legos in AoE as well, if you're uh, playing it well. So, just one more reason to always craft the Burning Wound Lego first. And one final little tip that I just uh, forgot or just almost forgot about was the meta tip, right? If you're starting a dungeon and uh, your group leader gets up a pull timer, he's about to put in the key, your meta will actually stay on if you use it before um, the key starts, but it will also reset the cooldown of it. So you use it here, the key starts, and um, now you have 
20 seconds of meta to use on the first pack or whatever and uh, your meta is still up again well obviously it's not up now because i'm not in a key but if i were in a key that coolant would have reset so quick little tip in dungeons for you guys otherwise i hope you enjoyed this guide and um, as i said before leave a comment if you find anything sus in here or if you have some thoughts some questions also subscribe if you want more content leave a like if you liked it and i will see you guys in the next one have a good one bye bye